Today we start in a new book, 2 Kings, and it's the ongoing story of the, well, the story of Israel and their kings. It's a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. And chapter one focuses on the northern kingdom, which now is no longer under the rule of Ahab. Ahab, who was a spiritual disaster for the northern kingdom. And now his son sits on the throne. And he is called Ahaziah. And this is an interesting, crazy chapter because this king falls through a roof and he's injured. And he sends some of his men to these false gods. Well, listen to what it says. Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And his son falls through the lattice of the upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go, inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Akron, whether I shall recover from this injury. So he doesn't go to the god of Israel. He sends his men to a false god. He wants to find out if he's going to live or not. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, Go up, meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, is it because there's no God in Israel that you're going to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Akron? So in other words, he sends, God does, his prophet to these messengers of this evil king who's trying to find out if he's going to live or not to ask the question, is there no God in Israel that you have to turn to false gods? Well, it's not saying there is no God, but is it that you can't trust the one true living God anymore? Well, this pagan god, this god of the northern kingdom gets angry and he sends a group after Elijah and they're going to kill him. But instead, God sends down fire and kills the men. This happens twice. And then a third time they send these men up. And finally, the guy who goes up doesn't want to get killed. So he gets on his knees and he, he begs that he not be taken out. And Elijah condescends to him and allows him to live. But the moral of the story is this, that the northern kingdom had drifted so far from the Lord that now when trouble came their way, and, and by the way, this king, he does die, and Elijah says he will die. But here's the deal. There's so much confusion. There's so much misunderstanding. There, there's so lack of direction that they're going to find out different things from gods who don't even exist. And Elijah tries to let them know that there is a one true God that you can ask, that you can seek, that you can know. And it's kind of the story of, of mankind who continually drifts from God and seeks answers and solutions from all kinds of places and people. And really it comes down to that question that was asked, is there really no God that you wouldn't go seek the one true God? You're trying to find it through, you know, palm readers and through drugs and through out of body experiences and all the crazy things and psychics that people go after. The, the lesson, I think, in chapter 1 of 2 Kings is there is a true God of Israel, and He can give answers, and He can give direction, and He can give purpose to life.